Hi everyone, um, I'm Sebastian, I'm a um, software engineer at um, Adesso, a, a German uh, software company, and today I want to talk about um, Angular 2 and RxJS and how um, you can build awesome stuff with it. So this talk is a really um, a beginner-friendly beginner, beginner -friendly talk, so um, when you have no knowledge about RxJS or Angular 2, it, it's totally fine. So you can um, follow these along re um, really easy. So, um, yeah, you've, you can find me on Twitter afterwards or chat with me. Um, I'm here today and tomorrow, um, so we can actually uh, talk about this stuff. Um, yeah, so let's get started with um, Angular 2 and RxJS. Um, please raise your hands if you have uh, built something with Ang uh, Angular 2 since the release. Oh, that's kind of like a third of the audience. That's cool. So. Um, yeah, today um, I want to combine these two and show you how we uh, can um, yeah, create reactive applications with it. So um, let's get started with Angular 2. Um, I want to give you a little introduction. Um, what's Angular 2? What uh, can you do with that? And then move on to RxJS and show you the basics of that. So um, Angular 2 is a framework for developing um, web apps and mobile apps. You may already know AngularJS, the popular framework. And Angular 2 is, a, is a developed by a small company called Google, you may know. And um, it's a complete rewrite in TypeScript. So the team decided to um, change to TypeScript. And um, yeah, that's pretty much the um, main language you use when you develop um, uh, Angular 2 applications. Um, the rewrite took about uh, two and a half years, and um, since then there was uh, a lot of breaking changes. So it was really hard in the RC phase to um, follow these breaking changes, but now we have a stable version since uh, September of this year, and we can um, create um, really useful stuff with it. Um, there's also a new website called angular.io. You will find um, um, Angular 2 related stuff on that website, and all the Angular 1 uh, related stuff is on angularjs.org if you uh, want to check out it. Um, the main difference between angularjs and um, Angular 2 is that we have a component based architecture. That means that we um, write applications um, with uh, the help of components and we have um, some sort of component tree in our application. So every application has some sort of uh, root component and multiple child components that, um, yeah, displays your application. So in this example, I have a, uh, a, a application root component and then um, maybe we have a main navigation and a user list with um, some user list entry components underneath. So yeah, that's basically a tree of components and yeah. That's uh, pretty much it. So here's an example of a um, simple Angular 2 component. Um, this example is written in TypeScript. And as you may know, um, TypeScript has a feature called um, decorators. So we have here an ECMAScript 6, uh, 6 class. And we decorate this ECMAScript 6 class with the help of this decorator. So we say, we basically say it's a component in Angular 2. It has a CSS selector called my user profile. So um, you can use uh, this component as an HTML tag with um, the help of my user profile. And then we have an HTML template. So the template language of Angular 2 is um, HTML. And um, you see this username that's defined uh, um, to John, and the username um, gets replaced in the templates with the help of this um, curly brackets, curly braces. So that's basically an Angular 2 component, and that is all I have to do to use it as, a, as an HTML tag in my application. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, um, the Angular 2 component. Now I want to give you a little introduction to RxJS and what is actually RxJS. Um, who has played with um, Lodash in the past or underscore JS? Please raise your hands. So there's a lot of people. 
uh, that's a lot of people. So RxJS, you can imagine uh, that RxJS is a low dash for async data, data. So that means when you have an async uh, stream of data, like for example, click events or um, yeah, maybe uh, HTML, um, um, HTTP requests or um, yeah, uh, set interval or set timeout, these are all um, async uh, stuff that happens in the browser. And we can handle it with RxJS uh, pretty easy. So what's RxJS? RxJS um, stands for uh, Reactive Extensions. It's a library for um, reactive programming. And um, the version 5 is also a complete rewrite um, in TypeScript. And the nice thing about RxJS 5 is that it's a um, um, direct dependency of Angular 2. So, um, and the main building block of um, these Rx um, libraries, they are also many, um, they are also available in many other languages, um, is the observable. Um, so the observable is the main building block you can use. And there are many uh, other Rx um, libraries for other languages like um, Swift or Java or .NET you can use. And they have pretty much all the same implementation of this observable pattern. So um, what is actually an observable? So when you look at the current landsca landscape of um, yeah, methods we have in the browser, um, we have um, functions that are um, pool-based and uh, synchronous, and then we have iterators. They can emit multiple values, so functions return one value, and that is pretty much it. And then we have um, these um, promises. So promises are um, push-based, that means that we don't know when um, the value comes back, but um, we have to ask for it that we want this value when it's really, when it's happened. And what's really missing is something that can emit multiple values and is um, push-based. So um, for that, you can use observables. So think of like uh, event streams in the browser, so like um, click events or um, WebSocket connections. You have um, multiple events over time. So when a WebSocket connection sends some data, um, a promise is, is not really um, useful for that because you have one value that can be emitted and then the promise is over, basically. So, um, yeah, that's um, really useful, in my opinion, that we have some sort of um, observable you, uh, we can use in um, Angular 2 applications. So, here's a simple observable um, you can write. So, I import the observable class from the RxJS library, and, um, yeah, I have to provide a, a so-called observer. And this observer can emit values over time. So in this example, I um, emit new values with this um, next function or method um, that emits, every, uh, emits a value every second um, with a promise that would, be no, uh, that would be not possible because you can emit only one value. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that observables are lazy by default. That means this code um, you see here will not run in the browser as long as someone subscribed to it. So observable, observables don't do anything, anything uh, until you subscribe to them. And uh, you can subscribe to them with the help of the subscribe method you see here. So when someone subscribes to this observable, this observer uh, gets executed. So that's the main difference between um, promises and, obs and observables. Um, promises are um, yeah, not lazy and observables are lazy by default. But you can uh, configure this behavior if you want. So we can visualize it like this. It's basically a stream of events over time. So we get a new value every one second and um, we are able to subscribe to these values and uh, do some, uh, execute some logic. 
um, when we um, combine, uh, when we um, um, look at observables and promises, so here's the um, subscribe method. It has, um, yeah, it has uh, three params you can provide. An X function, you have seen before in the slides, um, then an arrow function. This is, um, yeah, this um, is like in, in promises. And then there's also a, a, a third param you can provide, the complete function. Um, that basically says when there's no new um, events that can happen, so maybe there's an HTTP request and the request is done, um, we can basically say in an observable that this stream is over and no um, new dat data gets uh, emitted over time. So that, that's a, a main difference between observables and promises. There's also a uns an, up an unsubscribe method you can use. And we can um, do some cleanup. So when somebody says, I don't want um, the new values, I'm not interested anymore, we can do some cleanup in the return function of that observer. And in this example, I clear the interval that I created above to say um, I don't need to emit new values. And when someone um, calls the unsubscribe method, here I'm doing this after 2.5 seconds, then this uh, cleanup function gets called. And that is what you would see in the browser when you run this example. So we get a start. Uh, because someone has subscribed to this observable, then the, the zero and one, and then the unsubscribe after 2.5 seconds, and then, um, yeah, the observable stream is over, basically. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stuff to learn, so that's Ben Lesh. He's the uh, lead developer of RxJS 5, the latest rewrite of RxJS, and, yeah, you can, uh, um, yeah, you can, um, I'm still learning every day some new stuff about RxJS, and there's also a lot of operators um, we, we will see in a few moments. So to sum this up, um, advantages of RxJS observables in comparison to promises. Observables can emit multiple values over time. They are cancelable. And that's uh, also a main difference between promises and observables. Um, you can't cancel promises at the moment. It's in, it's in discussion right now that promises are cancelable. Um, but at the moment, you are not able to say, I don't want this uh, result from this promise. So this promise runs um, even if you don't want the result anymore. And observables provide useful operators you can use. So you can um, transform the stream with the help of operators. We will see that in a moment. And then you are able to um, yeah, transform the stream before, you, uh, before it gets passed to the um, subscribe method. So now let's get back to um, the um, Angular 2 related stuff. You know the basics of RxJS and Angular 2. And yeah, let's check out what we can do with um, Angular 2 and RxJS. In um, Angular 2, there's a module called HTTP, and that's basically for uh, making HTTP requests. And the nice thing about that is that it uses observables. So here's, a, ex in, here's an example I would like to show you. Um, I have a simple component an attendees list, and I want to um, fetch the attendees from a JSON endpoint, a REST endpoint. And therefore, I can use the HTTP, um, HTTP class from the Angular HTTP module and um, can provide it to the constructor you will see here. So, um, the dependency injection of Angular 2 knows that um, the framework has to inject an HTTP instance of that class. And then we are able to um, make an HTTP request with uh, the method HTTP.get. And um, 
to run this uh, HTTP request, we, ha we actually have to subscribe to it. So when you don't call subscribe, nothing will happen in the browser. That's basically the main difference between promises and observables. So um, we get the result in the subscribe method, and then we assign this result to the attendees. Um, uh, to the attendees. So when, we, when you run this, uh, you will see that it doesn't work. This is uh, because this result is actually a response instance. So the framework returns a response instance, and you can um, look up all the details of that response. So when you want the HTTP headers of that um, response, you can basically get it with this uh, response instance. So how can we fix this problem? We can use RxJS operators for that. So what are operators in um, RxJS? They basically transform the stream um, of values and return a new observable. So in this example, I use the um, map method you may already know from um, Lodash or even um, JavaScript arrays. And that returns a new observable. That basically means that um, we have actually two observables, and over time we get the value times two when we subscribe to this observable. So you don't know when this, um, when this event happened, but all the values that are emitted flows through this pipe of observables. You can chain them. There are um, many operators you can use. And yeah, it's pretty much a, um, an async um, stream of data that gets transformed by these obse observables um, uh, operators. So there's, there are a lot of operators, actually over 100 you can use. So as I said, there's a lot of stuff to learn. But there are some commonly used ones, like map filter, um, plug, um, merge map, flap map, and debounce time. Um, yeah, these are pretty much um, uh, all methods of um, Lodash or underscore JS. So um, when you know Lodash or underscore JS, this is really easy. There's also a um, good website if you want to learn more about these operators. Uh, it's called learnrxjs.io, and you can um, look up some examples about these operators. So let's get back to our problem. We have seen this error in the browser, and what we basically are doing here is to use this um, map operator and um, call a method called JSON, and that basically transforms our JSON into a JavaScript object. So um, when this flows through this pipe, we um, actually get res the result as um, the JavaScript representation of that JSON that is sent from the server. So with that, our um, example works in the browser. Um, we can actually do a little bit better with the help of um, so-called pipes. Pipes actually is a um, feature from uh, Angular 2 and you can basically um, format the uh, data you, you provide. When you know AngularJS, it's basically a new name for um, filters. So here are the commonly used ones, like uh, date pipe, so you can format a date for the user, so you can use it actually in the uh, template. Then there's also a JSON pipe for debugging, and a currency pipe for yeah, formatting um, currency values. And there's also an, a, an async pipe, and that is actually um, helpful when you have observables in your components. So you can actually use it like this. Um, you see this example that I had before, and I'm using this async pipe now in the template, and I don't call subscribe in my um, component class. So we can um, remove the subscribe method, 
and the async pipe handles this underneath. So it subscribes to this observable, and when the component gets destroyed, so um, let's say um, someone uh, leaves the page and the component is not needed anymore, um, then this async pipe unsubscribes automatically. So you don't have to call it um, by yourself. There's also um, some other useful operators you can use. Um, here's an example um, called um, retry operator. And what uh, that basically is, um, when there's an HTTP error, so maybe the backend has returned a 500 code, um, you can basically say, I want to retry this request two times. And it's, it's really just a one-liner. So um, when this um, yeah, HTTP request fails, uh, RxJS retries two times, and then um, when this also fails, um, we get back an error. So this is really powerful. This is one line of code, but it's a fully uh, supported retry mechanism. I have another example for you um, with um, HTTP polling. So let's say we want to update our list every th uh, three seconds because the list has some live data in it and we don't have a WebSocket connection available. So um, therefore, we can use the timer um, operator that basically creates an interval and um, emits the first value after zero milliseconds. That means we get, we get an emitted value after zero milliseconds. And then after uh, 3,000 milliseconds, we get uh, all the next values. That means we um, create a polling mechanism with uh, one operator. And then we would use another uh, operator called flat map. That basically um, maps the inner observable to the result, to the output. And that's basically it. And with that, we have a polling mechanism in three lines of code. And when there's a an, um, request that takes longer than three seconds, that request is automat automatically cancelled. That is also a, a, a good feature about uh, in, in RxJS. There are also more um, reactive APIs in Angular 2. Um, there is a module called Reactive Forms module. And with that, you are able to um, subscribe to value changes from um, form controls, so form inputs, and um, uh, whole forms. So you can basically subscribe to any value changes um, of that forms. And there's also a powerful router you can use, and you can subscribe to um, query params changes and uh, path parents changes. So that is also really powerful, and you combine it with these powerful um, operators. There are also um, two websites. Um, the official website of Angular 2 uh, is angular.io, and there's also a um, website I already mentioned, learnrxjs.io, where you can um, learn all the stuff about RxJS and um, yeah, all these powerful operators. So that's, uh, and that's all I have for you today. I want to thank uh, Yuri for reviewing my slides. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much.